Mermaid was a hit animated Disney film from 1989, and two years later, Capcom released a video game adaptation on the NES. The story is altered a bit from the movie, which is also altered from the book it was based on. Ariel has already turned human, met Eric, and they plan on getting married. But her underwater friends surface, pleading for her help to stop Ursula, who cast a spell over all the fish and plans on taking over the entire ocean. So Ariel matter-of-factly tells Eric that she's actually a former mermaid, turns back into a human-fish hybrid, and swims out to save the day. Eric seems unfazed by this bizarre revelation and tries to stop her to no avail. What's never explained here is where Ariel's father is. I mean, he was the king of the whole goddamn sea, he couldn't do anything to stop Ursula. Regardless, you'll play as Ariel, swimming through various sites, scrolling underwater levels. Pressing B will increase your swimming speed, and pressing A will attack. Ariel's attacks consist of bubbles that she musters together with her tail. These bubbles can trap enemies into a bubble which can be used to throw as a weapon. It'll take a couple shots to get these fish trapped. The first shot will freeze them momentarily, but once you upgrade the power of your bubbles, it will only take one shot. To upgrade your power, you'll have to grab red pearls found in treasure chests. You can reach a maximum level of three. You can also upgrade your range by getting green pearls. These also have a maximum level of three. The thing that sucks though is that if you die once, you'll lose all your upgrades, even if you're maxed out. And the pearls don't respawn, so you could conceivably grab every power up in the stage, die, lose everything, and you can't get a single power up now and have to battle the boss at the lowest level of range and power possible. I think if you're gonna lose the upgrades on every death, you should at least be able to get them back again. The one-ups respawn, so what the hell? Now and again you'll find these seashells that you can use as a weapon and to open up the treasure chests. The great thing is you can keep using the shell if you recover it, so you can go on a tear. In fact, you don't even have to throw it necessarily, you could just strike everything head on. Just make sure that you hit them with the shell. I mentioned the one-ups earlier. Those are these aerial dolls or whatever they're supposed to be. And hearts will fill up your health meter. Big hearts will add two hit points and small hearts add one. You start out with three. Other items you can grab are dingle hoppers and snarf blats, both of which add points, so who cares. The graphics are good, both in sprites and in background, as you would expect from Capcom. The animation is also well done, and the characters look like their counterparts in the cutscenes, although I think Eric looks a bit goofier than he did in the cartoon. The music is pretty mediocre if you ask me. In terms of production quality, it's pretty good, but the songs themselves just seem to go through the motion, and although the rendition of Under the Sea is pretty good, all the songs sound relatively the same. Speaking of lack of variety, the enemies are, for the most part, pretty run-of-the-mill too. It's not so much that there's a small number of enemies, it's just that they don't really do anything to separate themselves from the rest of the bunch. Most of them just kind of swim around. Different patterns, yes, but other than that, that's about it. The bosses are usually pretty easy too, and without the option to adjust the difficulty, they stay easy. Although strangely enough, they don't seem to get harder as the game goes on. They go all over the place, but I'll get into that later. Another negative aspect is the lack of stages. There are only five altogether, and they're all relatively short too. Although they do sometimes represent a setting from the movie in some cases. The controls are good, and although I feel the hit detection could be a little better, it's still pretty fun overall once you get past the minor deficiencies. The first stage is the Sea of Coral. Start off by grabbing the shell and using it to open up this treasure chest to grab a power pearl. Then you'll encounter some of these fish that are the most common enemy throughout the game. Trap one and use it as a weapon to take out the next. Keep in mind you can throw these shells and other weapons diagonally or straight up, so when you get to this octopus, you ought to get underneath him and attack. It's much easier than trying to get in front of him and avoid the rocks he lofts in your general direction. Then use the same shell to open up this chest and grab a range pearl. Then soon after is another shell which you can use on another chest right after for another range pearl. And then right after is this shower of starfish. They'll swoop up in a line to the surface and then come back down slowly in scattered formation. But if you just swim on, you'll bypass them before they even come close to a threat. Right after that is the boss, the shark that'll stay in one spot while fish pop out. Trap the fish in a bubble and then toss them at the shark. The only thing he'll ever do is swim across the screen. 
Sometimes he'll be up high and sometimes down low, and you can't throw downward, so if you want to attack him while he's low, you'll have to get in front of him. Otherwise, attack from a diagonal underneath. But it doesn't matter, he's easy as shit. Just as long as you don't let the fish bother you, and you don't wait too long to get in front of the shark, you'll breeze past him. Second stage is the sunken ship. After trapping the first fish you see, you'll encounter a ghost, or at least it appears that way, it's just a fish disguised as a ghost. Listen to what I'm saying here, a fucking fish disguised as a ghost. Hit him to knock the sheet off and then trap him. You come across this chest and you have nothing to break it open, so swim up these stairs here and knock the barrel over with your tail, which will open it up and give you a power pearl. The thing is, you must have at least one power point in order to move this barrel. On this staircase you'll notice a crab. These guys crawl around on the floors and can't be trapped when they crouch down like this, so you'll either have to wait for them to get back up or just say fuck it and move on without bothering. There'll be another chest where you need to use a barrel, but first move this one up here to grab the one up, then head up and knock this barrel over to open up the chest revealing a range pearl. Keep in mind that you'll need to follow the progress of the barrel, otherwise it'll disappear as it leaves the screen. Careful of the octopus right above where that barrel was. You may want to trap a fish and attack him from underneath, weaving your way between him and the rocks can be tricky. Knock this shell off the platform it's on and carry it up here to open up the chest for a power pearl. You're okay once you end up on land, you'll just flop around like a fish out of water, which is essentially what you are actually. These spiked balls will fall from the surface up here. You'll want to get the shell, but the intervals between these spiky descents are pretty short. If you attack them when your power is low, they'll just freeze, which doesn't do shit to help you out in this situation. So the only real option is to time your jump really well so you'll get there in between them. Then bring it down here to use on this chest up above for a range pearl. Then weave your way under this octopus, pushing this rock here at the bottom across, being careful not to get hit by the rocks. Follow the rock and use it to open up this chest and get a range pearl. Then use this shell to plow through your enemies on your way to the upcoming boss, Ursula's two eel henchmen. They'll hide behind the wall and pop out of any of the numerous holes in the background, then hang around and either retreat or sometimes swim straight out and pop back out from one of the holes again. To counter them, you have to trap the crabs that fall from the top of the screen and use them as weapons. Trouble is, they're often ducked down so you can't trap them, and so you have to wait for the opportunity, then you have to keep your eyes on the eels, and even though you get a warning of where they're coming from when their eyes peer out, it turns out the warning means shit since they can hurt you during the state anyway. So try to stay low and away from the holes as much as you can, attack from a safe distance and take your time. They take about 3 hits each, so if you can somehow manage to keep track of them, focus on killing them off one at a time. It's much easier with only one of these assholes on the screen. Once you finish them off, it's on to stage 3, Sea of Ice. As you may have guessed, it's ice themed, with the icy platforms being slippery if you end up on them. Knock the shell off here on the left side so you can grab it. If you send it to the other way, you'll probably lose it. Skip the first chest, there's nothing in it, but the second one up here has a power pearl. Attack this fish from underneath and send the shell up to open it up. Just act fast so you don't get hit by the water spit of the fish on the other side. You'll probably think this area here leads to nothing, but it actually leads to a chest with a range pearl if you have the power to move this big ass rock. These little nooks here lead to some hidden items if you hit them with the bubble or shell. Most of them are useless, but if you try these two areas here, you'll find some hearts. Knock the shell off here and use it on the chest in the wall for an easy range upgrade. Here you'll find a chest with two shells near it. This chest is empty, so carry a shell, kill the seahorse, and toss the shell up here on this platform. Then hop onto the platform and quickly jump into the water so you can catch the shell and use it on this chest for a power pearl. Grab the shell here and throw it upwards to the fish that swim by, and carry it up here to use on this chest for a range upgrade. Remember to catch the shell as it falls, because if you have to go back down to get it, these fish will respawn. Soon after is the boss, this walrus that'll sit atop one of the ice platforms on either side, knocking frozen fish into the water that'll unfreeze and attack you, and sometimes he sends a shell instead, which is your means of killing him. The only way you can die is if you let the fish kill you, or if you make contact with the walrus himself. Simply avoid the fish, and when a shell comes, grab it and throw it at him from the water. If it lands on the ice, you can jump onto the platform and nudge it to him, but if you're low on health or patient, just wait for a better opportunity so you don't get clocked with an unexpected frozen fish. It's pretty damn easy really, the only thing you have to watch for really are the fish, no big deal. Once you're done, it's onto stage 4, the undersea volcano. Really it's a series of mini volcanoes, as there'll be balls of magma spewing out of them. Try to stay high so they don't touch you, and plus if you get low enough you'll entice these guys hiding in the sand to come out. 
These shrimps seem to have wild erratic patterns, but they always alternate between fast and slow movements. So wait until the slow movement comes to line up your trap shot. Or you can just swim past them a lot of the time. Use the shell here on the chest on the left for a power upgrade. The one on the right doesn't have shit. Then if you have the power, knock these rocks out of the way and grab the one up. Then the volcanic activity will come from above. Who the hell ever heard of a volcano like this? You'll pass a chest and find a shell. Grab it and head back to the chest and open it up for a range pearl. Then up ahead there'll be a couple more chests. The one on the left that you can knock over with the barrel is empty. Don't bother with it. The second one after the shower of starfish has a range upgrade. Knock over this rock to get to it. Right after that is the boss, a seahorse orchestrating a barrage of attacks from cannons. All they do is fire more generic enemies from the game. Trap them and fire them back at the seahorse. Rinse, wash, and repeat. Considering that this is the second to last stage and the stage 2 boss was relatively challenging, this boss is fucking pathetic. All you have to do is keep your distance and trap these fish as they pop out. After dispatching of this poor excuse of a boss, it's on to Ursula's castle, and Sebastian warns you that the castle is a maze with a bunch of doors that connect to each other and will take you somewhere completely different if you try to head back through the one you came in. Ah, oh, fucking great. I've got flashbacks of stage 6 from Monster Party all over again. I really, really hope this doesn't resemble that fucking nightmare. Well, it is similar, but nowhere near as goddamn annoying since there aren't nearly as many doors. But it is odd that you can go back through the door you came in and end up somewhere completely different. So here's the path. First off, these chubby fish won't move a muscle. It'll just send three of its offspring up at you. Lazy bastard. Simply swim over them. If you can, knock this barrel over to the left and get some power. Then continue on. The doors are actually these freaky mouths. Go through the first one after getting out into the clearing, and then go back through the one you came in, then again, and then it's a linear path from here on out. See, not a huge headache. So then, swim past this fat fish and move this shit over to get an extra life. Then grab the shell here and use it on the second chest to get some range. Now up here, these large fish will send four little guppies out in all different directions, diagonally. So try to weave your way between them as you make your way up. And if you have enough power, you can actually trap these pricks. If you don't have full power, skip this huge rock and knock the smaller one off the ledge. But follow it quickly, like as soon as you hit it with your tail. And follow it to the ground. Push it to the right and you'll get a power pearl in this chest. If you have full power now, knock the big rock off and get a range pearl in the chest on the left. Up ahead you'll find a shell which can be used on the chest on the left down here for a range upgrade. The one on the right is useless. Then make your way up, go through the door, avoid a couple seahorses, and entering the next door will lead you to Ursula. She'll unleash several arcs of sparkly death balls which can transform into fish and seahorses if you hit them or simply let it sit there. Trap these creatures and fire them straight up at Ursula. It's a pretty basic strategy and it's not very hard as the spark balls are pretty slow and easy to avoid. Once you take her out, you'll discover she hasn't died and she's cast a spell on herself to make her gigantic. Well, I guess she's gigantic, it really just looks like she's closer than before. At any rate, your strategy is basically the same, except Ursula isn't sending shit from above, she's merely changing the direction of the current, and the fish and shit are already at the bottom. So it's just a matter of keeping yourself from getting blown too hard. Trap the creatures and fire them straight up. Much like the last battle, this one isn't very challenging either. Just repeat the process until she's dead. So then they basically recycle the ending from the movie where Ariel's father gives in and turns her back into a human so she can be with Eric. They get married, blah blah blah. But there's a major inconsistency here. If Ariel has no power to turn back into a human, with only her father's magic enabling her to do so, how in the holy name of hell does she transform back into a mermaid herself in the beginning of the game? Huge fucking plot hole. So overall this game has its ups and downs. Smooth graphics, tight control, gameplay is pretty good, but the enemies are boring, the game is too short, and the boss battles are too easy and repetitive. So when you break it all down, you end up with a game that's alright. If you want to play a game and you're feeling indifferent, then this is a good choice. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.